Welcome back. Well, uh, I will just have a few questions for uh, the first public relations officer. Um, well, thank you for joining us again this morning. But could you tell us, what's the procedure for dispersing a writer's crowd? Okay. Mr. Moshu, can you hear me? Uh, you know, like I said earlier on, uh, the Commissioner of Police in charge of uh, various commands have the discretion to assess situations, especially as regards to unlawful assembly, uh, protests, and uh, demonstration or riot appropriately. Uh, the, the procedures are very clear. And uh, maybe if you want to, me to limit it to what you have watched on your video clip or what you have shown before, of seeing the scene of tear gas, or probably seeing the uh, use of can water cannon, it is expected that the officer commanding the police personnel that's going to well, a riot, if it turned into a riot, uh, should go there and read the word of proclamation, after which people refuse to stay dispatched, warning them that everybody gathered there uh, want to uh, disperse and go back there. A lawful business peacefully, but if they refuse the charge in the batting session, you see policemen that carry cane sheet and you call it carry batting, uh, will go in uh, to charge them to, to, to push them back and compel them to dispatch. But if that doesn't happen, then the use of smoke will now come in. Uh, smoke is the, the normal tear gas we talk about, and if they still fail to depart, become so riotous to that level before uh, the use of firearm will, will now be engaged. And the use of firearm, the police are not to kill. And that is why you don't uh, shoot at rioters from behind. Uh, if uh, you are calling a riot, and even when you want to employ the use of firearm, it's only indicated police personnel alone, not everybody that are harmed, that are not engaged, because you have the first line, which are first line of policemen that carry batting and cane shield. Then you have the second line, uh, which equally carry uh, gunners uh, with uh, uh, smoke grenade. Then the last line is those who carry rifles. So in this process, if the first, uh, uh, first line were charging, which are those with batting and uh, with uh, cane shield, and the rioters still refuse to leave, then those with uh, smokes who, who engage them, if they, uh, they refuse to equally disperse, then those with rifle only indicated not all of them will fire and they are to, to him the nail and not to, to shoot where uh, such rioter can die. And uh, for anybody that shoots a rioter from the back will be gu guilty or liable uh, for prosecution. But in this regard, we have not got into that level at all. We have a level where miscry infiltrated the rank and we don't want the assembly to turn into a riot because if we turn into a riot, we are going to use all the necessary force to be able to okay. quell the riot situation. All right. So, Let's get to hear the accounts now of uh, DG Adeyonju, who of course was there. So let him tell us what transpired on the day. DG, can you hear me? Could you go ahead and tell us what transpired on the day? Yes, immediately, uh, thank you for having me on the show. You know, immediately we, we got to the venue of um, uh, the protest that was on Tuesday. You know, we, we were, we were um, confronted by the police and they told us that we, we had had a successful sit out yesterday, which was Monday the day before, which was Monday, and that there was no need for us to proceed, that this cannot be a daily thing, that it's going to become an embarrassment to the government, and that um, we should reconsider, you know, we should postpone maybe by another week or two weeks and just come back on an another day and we have a procession. And we said that the oppressors cannot tell the oppressed how to complain, that we have a program and the police were adequately in informed of all this and that they cannot prevent us from uh, carrying out the daily sit out. And we looked for a place and we sat down. And as we sat down, we started. You know, we were just about 10 or thereabout. As we started, the water cannon vehicles started hovering around us. And the next thing, they started um, pouring water on us, you know, the hot water from the water cannons and all that. And, you know, there were about 20 dogs there. You know, they brought about 20 dogs. There were, there were a lot of horses and all that. And, they started releasing the dogs on us, so we had to, you know, st we started running towards where the police people were, were you know, because we were trying to prevent the dogs from biting us. And again, they started, af after they saw that we were, you know, we were trying to uh, maneuver away within the, uh, the, the, the garden, the fountain, they, they shot tear gas at us, directly at us. That was at that point that um, one um, silver, silver bed journalist was injured, badly injured by, on, the, on his left arm. Then um, another protester, Theophilus, was also badly injured, fainted. We had to rush him away from the scene, and some took him to the hospital. And we went to another section of the Unity Fountain, and we were briefing journalists that were on ground. While we were doing this, this shot about three or four tiger canisters again at us. 
You know, okay, so uh, it's De 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 uh, probably to just uh, uh, button here. Did you feel the need to uh, perhaps take some kind of uh, legal permission from the police before you embarked on your protest? We, we, we had informed the police. We informed the police and sought for police protection. We had written to the SSS as well. We had a security meeting with both the police and the SSS. You know, it will interest you to know that the commissioner of police had called me a day before the, uh, you know, on Monday after the successful rally that we should jettison tomorrow's activity. So it was going to constitute an embarrassment to the government, and I said no, we we, we cannot. So so that since that since uh, did you, I'm, I'm sorry, since uh, you did take permission from the police, then how comes there was alleged that uh, miscreants were taking over your protest? There was no miscreant. We're just ten. We're less than ten. There are there are sufficient evidence on social media. You know, we posted while we were having the delicious that we. We, we, we posted every video on social media, how the police were pouring water cannons on us, how they shot tear gas on us. There is sufficient evidence on social media. This is not 1970. This is 2017. The internet age. There is no how that the police can lie that they, they, were, they were miscast there. All the evidence are on social media. And you see, this, this comes to the question why Nigerians will always view the police with suspicion. Do you understand? So... You know, there is sufficient evidence to disprove the lies that have been peddled by the police. Okay, uh, hold, hold on. Um, let me just ask you just one more question before you go. I did see a very dramatic scene uh, looking at those pictures, and I saw Charlie Boy himself falling from his chair. Tell us what was exactly happening to him at that point. You know, he had collapsed when the Tigers were shot at us. You know, and again, you know, he's, he's 66. Do you understand? Because... The, the tear gas were not just, you know, naturally you shoot the tear gas around the, close to the protesters. No, no, the tear gas were shot directly at us. And while we were yet sitting again, they kept shooting the tear gas. You know, so the, the smoke from the tear gas, you know, what must have affected him. He, he had collapsed earlier before, before then. And again, that was the second time he was collapsing. And for us, we are not in, interested in all this back and forth. We just want the president to resume or resign. And if that is not too much to ask. The president has been gone for 94 days. All right, DG. Well, thank you for talking to us this morning.